Good morning and welcome along to the start of a brand new FM21 live stream story from Dundee United with me Daniel. You've been voting over the last few weeks throughout the beta period where we were with Wigan and where we were starting our long term video stories and you guys have chosen out of the four options that Dundee United is the club you want me managing. So here we are, we're about to take over I just wanted to start here so we could prove that we were doing the minimum badges, we were making it as hard as possible, and we'll go through the whole introduction period once we're offered the job. So thank you for all of those that are waiting, thank you for coming along, please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already, please do come and say hello in the chat, let us know who you support, who you're managing in FM, and how you're getting on. Did your team win yesterday? Lots of FA Cup football, a brilliant game between Peterborough and Chorley in the evening, so loads to talk about today. And we're not going to do a huge amount with Dundee United today. We'll introduce the squad, the staff, and we'll go through some of the background bits that people often ask in my videos and don't get to see. Zorro Dylan, L Gaming, welcome along. Thank you for being involved already. Please do get involved. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it. We're almost at double figures Wait, just from people waiting, which is incredible. So thank you so, so much for that. Let's go and get involved, though, because we've got a lot to talk about today. Of course, the last three weeks or so, you guys have been voting. So we had four options for our live stream series, Luton Town, the club I support, Dundee United, who of course are the eventual winners, Stevenage, as we picked a side who got a reprieve with the Macclesfield situation last year, and then the other one was Ballymena United. Now because they lost out, we did a little mini mobile series with them, that finishes this afternoon at half five. The first episode of that, a little mobile series, which I'd never done before, nearly a thousand, is absolutely incredible. So thank you for getting involved in that. Thank you for coming along. But we're with Dundee United, who in the end won by about 8 or 9%. It was quite comfortable by the end of it. Uh, L Gaming well, still loads more subs. The channel is flying. It is absolutely crazy. So when the new game came out, we had 1, 000, just past 1,300. And now we're closing in on 1,700. So it has been a monumental growth. Um, so thank you everyone for supporting that. Nevsky, morning, welcome along. Thank you, all is well. I hope the same for you guys too. Craig Savage, he's devastated. <laughs> I'm guessing you wanted a bit of loot and town action, did you? Uh, Dylan, I support Wigan and currently doing a Wigan and Stockport County save. Oh, so I did the Wigan beta series and got very lucky, as you know. So I'm guessing we won't be getting Tycoon takeovers immediately in this one. But either way, we'll try and enjoy it as it goes. Um, Stockport County are a... Uh, club that I've always had a bit of a soft spot for. So I, I always used to do a save with them when they dropped to the National League North. They used to be my building a club from bottom to top. So I completely understand anyone who does that. But thank you all for your incredible support. We're well into double figures already and the likes are getting close as well. So thank you for dropping in. But I think it's probably time that we go and take the Dundee United job, isn't it? We're a Sunday League footballer. We've got no coaching badges. I have got one in real life, but I don't think it's the equivalent of the National C licence because it's just the one to coach kids and that. So I don't think it's quite on that level. Um, but we're going to say no coaching badges, Sunday League footballer. I normally give myself two for all the attributes apart from player and youngster knowledge because we rely on our scouts and our director of football for that quite often in most of the saves. And then for the coaching attributes... To make it fair, I put working with youngsters too. The one coaching badge I've done is to work and do coaching for children. So it seems to make sense. So let's go and confirm that. We are the, the management style, the suit style. We just observe on the training ground, pick people aside and give them little tips. But let the trainers do the coaching. So are we ready? Let's start playing because we have got a massive introduction to Dundee United. We did have a little glimpse at the squad, just a couple of the key players. When we were doing the, the announcement episode on Tuesday. And there was a couple of little little surprises in the squad. I'm hoping it will be pretty decent. Uh, Dylan, yeah, watched all 10 episodes. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. The, the ending to that Wigan series is something I'll probably never be able to replicate in Football Manager. No matter how many years are here. Uh, L Gaming, yeah, Wrexham drew one all yesterday, 26 minutes of stoppage time with the injury. Thankfully, Rob Layton's fine. He's been tweeting, he's been... Sending little videos out. He's doing alright. That's the main thing. Um, but it should have been abandoned for me. When there's no fans in. I know there's a lot of warriors about catching up games. We saw the, the BT game in the international break. Where because of the weather it was abandoned half time. And the cost for the clubs are monumental. So I get why they want to carry on. But for me it, it probably ruined the spectacle. 
Rob, good morning. Welcome along. Uh, can't wait to play the Xbox version. You and me both. Um, I just don't have a PC. Will it have most of the features as PC? So the Xbox version is designed to be the equivalent of FM21 Touch on the PC. So not the full game, but the touch end, which isn't a million miles off. I mean, I've always found that very good. It's probably a bit like FM from maybe four or five years behind, I guess, with detail-wise. But yeah, it's supposed to be compatible then, I think, as well. So I'm kind of hoping I can do it. I probably won't do anything initially with the Xbox One because I haven't got the recording equipment to do it good or do it well on the console. Um, but I will try and maybe do something over Christmas or even just a first look, if nothing else. Uh, Nevsky, you'll be lurking, no problem. Thank you for coming in. Into double figures, flying along, do appreciate it. Yeah, Tom, Reese Nelson looked good Thursday night. I know you've been a fan of his. I've been telling you for ages, of that Arsenal young side, he is the best one. When everyone was screaming about Guendouzi the first half of last year, coming from France, when everyone was screaming about Saka, Reese Nelson is going to be the best player out of them. I can promise you it. Maka, morning, welcome along. Good to see more of the uh, the Scottish Brigade in this morning because we are taking charge of Dundee United. So let's go and get into the introductions and we'll be back in a chat in a minute. Because I'm sure there's going to be a few photographers out now, isn't there? Here we are then. Dundee United hire us a one and a half year contract, a one and a half grand a week contract, sorry. A two year deal. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever taken a job at the start of FM that's been more than one year for, a, for ages. That's a pretty remarkable thing, that. Mickey Mellon, in and out. He went from Tranmere, hasn't even managed a game. But we've got a really good job on our hands here. Still 27. Don't be fooled by the grace. Let's have a look. Let's see what the assistant recommends. Let's see what the club situation is. Two and a half star reputation. Media prediction seventh. So they're, even though they've just come up, they're expected to be fighting close to that top half. I'm secretly hoping we can nick sixth to be honest i want to get in the top half first year or if not maybe on a massive cup run we can get into europe quickly this could be special we've got great training facilities we'll try and bump up the youth ones when we do eventually make europe and tanner ice park the tails will be coming from there and it's a 14,223 capacity stadium but there's more that endears us to to dundee united there's plenty going on there because we have got an opportunity to have a director of football from the start. Tony Askar, 12 for ability and potential judgment, 11 for negotiation. That's not bad at all. Good to have a proper director of football in. We've got an assistant manager in Stephen Frail, formerly of Celtic Hearts and Northern Ireland under 19s. He looks pretty decent as well. So there's some good coaches in at the club too. That's something else that impresses us. And of course, it's a club with a rich history. You know, they won the Scottish Premiership in the 80s. They won the Scottish Cup in 2010. They won the League Cup in the 80s a couple of times. The Scottish Championship last year, of course. And in the SPFL Challenge Cup, no longer the Tunnock's Caram away for trophy, which really upsets me. But three years ago, Dundee United won that as well. If we look at the best 11, they're suggesting a 4-2-3-1. But I'm pretty sure that's Nicky Clark who was at Rangers. And he's not a number 10, is he? Let's have a look. Oh, he is a bit. He's not good enough, though. I want to go 4-4-2. Proper old school. Let's have a look at the, the pre-season club culture. We've got to develop players using the club's youth system. No issue with that. Sign young players to develop for a profit. No issue with that, but I'd like to not sell them on in future. Though we are in Scotland, so a lot of big Premier League clubs will come calling. I do worry about that for Lawrence Shankland early on. Mid-table this season, quarter-finals of the Cups. And then they want to be top half next season and best of the rest for the third year. That could be interesting. Let's get back to the next one. I've got to say it's fairly realistic, if not slightly ambitious, to be fair. So let's see what they say. Nothing else to be done. We'll arrange all of the sort of introductory stuff. And we'll take a little look. But let me catch up with the chat as more of you are popping in. Uh, Tom's are speaking to Mako. I'll ignore that one for now. Uh, he went... He won't be better than Saka. Maybe eventually, but at the moment, he's the best of the lot. Saka is amazing, but don't push him up too much. You know, Give Nelson the chance. Um, I'm selling that centre-back for one million. From Is that from your Wrexham save? Because he was very good. Yeah, do that. Get the season-long loan back. Always works a treat. We did that a few times in FM20, didn't we? 
Uh, Craig, Arsenal will still lose anyway. Always bashing Arsenal in here, aren't you? We love everyone. Uh, I expect you to recreate the glory days when Dundee United were beating Barcelona at the new Camp. How many years have we got to do this save? <laughs> I've, got, I've got to be done by next October. I don't know if we'll be able to make it by then, but we'll have a go. Uh, Rob, thanks. Really enjoy your channel. I oh, appreciate that. Thank you for coming along and getting involved. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Xbox return. I didn't mind the old edition, to be honest, but it, it's just the layout that didn't quite work at the time on the 360. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how they've worked the navigation side because they will have changed it massively to bring it back. Um, Tom, it's Stuart Ad Adamson, former lead singer of Big Country, Scottish band from the 80s or 90s. Can't say I've heard of them. I'll have to go and have a little look. Dylan Newton, how come there were 26 minutes of added time at the Wrexham game? Yeah, it's just because of the, the bad head injury to the keeper. Wasn't pleasant, but thankfully he's okay now. Uh, El Gaming, yes, it is the centre-half from your Wrexham save. Alan McGregor would be a great goalkeeper to sign vast experience. So actually, having a look at the brief look at the squad, I think the goalkeeper is probably one of our best covered areas. So with the limited budget, we'll probably have to leave keeper. I guess the only other thing I would say is before we get into this, we'll talk about the transfer rules and the loan rules as well, because there are quite a few of them. I try to make it, for those who know, as, as difficult as possible for myself. Oh, the buyback of two and a half million. You're going all Spanish and Italian there. They love a buyback clause. Works a treat. This channel, one of the best FM channels. Oh, you're too kind. Appreciate it. Dylan, hopefully on Xbox, they won't cut as many of the features off as on the mobile version. Oh, no, definitely not. It'll be more like touch. It won't be like mobile. Um, I've got to say the mobile version, it's it's not as realistic. It's more like a sort of arcade, arcade style simulation, sorry, which you'd probably expect, to be honest. Um, but no, it'll be more like the, the touch version that we've done on the Christmas series before and things like that. So it's near enough full feature. It's just not quite as detailed. So, like there's less, there's only one line press conferences and there's, uh, team talks only at two stages in a match rather than three. It just tries to make it a little bit more free flowing. But to be honest, the way the normal game processes this year, it's not that bad. Uh, did you see Carl Robinson yesterday? He wasn't happy with his keeper. Did you see him the midweek before in the EFL trophy? He came out after the match. And after that um, interview, I said to the lads on the podcast, I said, that's going to be our next manager special. He'll be gone next week. He's still there at the moment, but I don't think he's going to stick it out much longer. He does not seem happy. And if a job comes up, so like there's rumours of the Sunderland one coming up, I could see him going there. Um, but players that we've spoken to have played under him have always sung his praises. They've talked so highly of him across the board. I mean, I think about someone like Dean Bowditch, who talked about him at MK Dons and how good he was there. So I think he'll get another job easily. Yeah, so the Xbox, as Maka says, the Xbox version is based on the touch classic mode. Yeah, I love FM Mobile. You can zip through the seasons. It's really quick and enjoyable. It's just for those who are hot on the realism and the immersive experience, it's more like the arcade style. I would say it's closer... It's got more detail and it focuses more on the off-the-pitch side, but it's closer to the sort of FIFA career mode than it is a football manager one there. Reggae boy, good morning. Welcome along. Thank you for coming in. We're almost at 20 now already. One like away from double figures. So if you haven't yet, please do chuck a thumbs up on it as we go through the introductory messages at Dundee United. We've been hired here. We're replacing Mickey Mellon. The poor man's out of work already. He'll be wishing he stayed at Tranmere. Now Keith Hill's nicked his seat. We've got quite a lot of players in the last year of their contract, but only one with big ability and only one more with big potential. So we'll go and have a look at all of those in a minute. One of the things we've got to do before today is set up our, our vague tactical direction, and I've got a feeling it's going to be 4-4-2. It's not something I've used on this game yet, I don't think, bar breaking, but I might do it with the attacking wingers, so like Cliftonville or Dorking with the 4-2-4 and see how that works. Uh, in terms of the club vision, we've gone for all of that already, so we'll accept his meeting there. And to get a two-year deal is a massive achievement. And just to say, because we've gone for this as a long-term story, if we do get sacked, we will find another job and carry on. I'm hoping it won't come to that, but you never know. And I'm guessing we haven't got long before the League Cup comes along. Unless it's been moved later in the year the first season, I'm not quite sure. Injury update, two players with recurring injuries. And one of them's Liam Smith with a three-and-a-half star ability. Big signings from the window, and we've got advice to make people captains and set-piece takers. We're not going to worry about that for now. 
Good to see Luke Bolton in there, a former player of ours at Luton Town last season. Uh, would love to see him at Sunderland, Macca. Parkinson's a joke. See, I don't understand with Phil Parkinson. At Bradford, he did one of the best turnaround jobs you have ever seen from a club that was struggling for so long. And I can kind of see why the appeal was there for Sunderland. It just, it doesn't seem right. I mean, he he, he worried me a bit at Bolton. I, I think there's still that brilliant manager in there somewhere, but the Bolton saga really seemed to affect him. And I'm not a... Uh, I'm not confident now that he'll turn it around at Sunderland. It does worry me. But yeah, Carl Robinson, he's a catch for any League One club. I don't know what's going on at Oxford. There seems to be something off the pitch, to be honest. Uh, Rago, looking forward to this series. Thank you, appreciate it. Can't go wrong with a with a 4-4-2. One deep line playmaker. Oh, I love a deep line playmaker. I've always got one in a team somewhere. And one centre midfield attacking. See, I always go for the either a box-to-box -box or a Mazala in there, just to try and get a third man in the box for the crosses. Um, but with the, the forwards, we'll do one of two things. I either like target man with advanced forward, or as you've seen with Breakin this year, and with Cliftonville at the end of last year, I've kind of got the advanced forward poacher combo working. Two little strikers, a lot of movement with the two attacking wingers. Can work an absolute treat. Macaron playing at 4-2-4 with Sterling this year, been working well. It's a tactic I loved. You saw it with Cliftonville. It was brilliant. Uh, Nevsky is the head coach coming out today as well. Yep, yeah, normal video at 3.30 every single day. Um, the only days there might be an exception to that are Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Well, we'll do something a bit different because I don't want people who are, are obviously busy in the festivities to miss out on the regulars. And equally for people who haven't perhaps got that sort of combination this year with the restrictions and things like that, I want them to have something on the channel. So there'll be something on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, but probably not those stories. You can probably see behind me, my other half's been starting with the decorations, so you'll probably see gradually more creeping in, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, head coach out as normal today. Um, and the last mobile episode from Balamina is out at 5.30 today as well. So triple header. And in between that, there's loads of FA Cup football on the BBC. You could not ask for more, could you? What a Sunday it is. Uh, I remember when Bradford beat Villa in the semis of the League Cup. Yeah, they beat... That was over two legs, wasn't it? They beat Arsenal in the quarters. Okay, it went wrong in the final. But then they won the playoffs and got promoted as well. It was an incredible season. Uh, less said about Bradford in the League Cup, the better. Sorry, Tom. I mentioned the Arsenal bit before I got to your message. Uh, can you hire and fire backroom staff on the touch version? Uh, yeah, I think you can do it on the mobile version. So I'd assume so. I'm pretty sure you could last year. Um, so I, I can't imagine you wouldn't. I think all of the, the features are there. It's just they're not quite so detailed as such. So like I say, the press conferences are one question. Uh, the dynamic stuff and that, the stuff that's come into the game in a full version the last year or two, either don't come in or come down in a watered version. So if I give you an example, in the full game this year, you've seen the condition and that has changed to sort of a, a picture rather than numbers and that that aren't so realistic to judge. But in the touch and mobile version, I'd have guessed there'd still be numbers. That's the sort of thing that's different, I guess. Or, or the star rating system. It just takes a year or two to catch up. Um, but for the Xbox version, I'd be surprised if they haven't pulled out all the stops. Particularly by the fact it's been delayed slightly. They might have had something special going on. Thank you for everyone coming in as well. We're into the 20s. The thumbs up are going massive. So thank you for coming in. Please do chuck a thumbs up on it if you haven't already. If you are new along for some reason, come and subscribe down below. The more the merrier. The head coach back at half three today. And, I mean, the first episode's verging on 5,000 views. It's remarkable for a channel my size. So thank you for your support with it. Uh, Dylan, I always... I seem to play like Man United counter-attacking, which doesn't sound great, but I'm eighth in the league with Wigan. And you probably didn't have a tycoon takeover. So that's incredible with the starting squad or anything near it. Uh, Craig beat Arsenal, yeah, he's got in there as well. Uh, do you think the Xbox version will be able to download face, face and kit packs? I'd be surprised if there wasn't a way. There'll be enough clever people in the community that'll be able to do it. Uh, Ryan and Robert hiring Liverpool's old C C CEO, sorry. Oh, what's his name? What's his name? I can't remember his name now. Tell me his name, El Gaming. He's a, it was a, very good there, wasn't he? I can't remember his name. For the life of me, I can picture his face and everything. Uh, Reggae Boy Gaming, are you going to try and keep a core of Scottish players in the team? I hope so. I hope so. That's the plan. 
we like to, obviously Shanklin's the star man up front. I'd sort of generally like to have, when I'm in Scotland, a blend of Scottish and English, about half and half if I can. That's the ideal. Christian Perslow, that's the man. Oh, that's the one. Uh, yeah, for a National League club. He's, he's a good footballing man, and that's the main thing. Is that they're, they're showing their intent not to get too involved in the footballing side. So, yeah, I think that's a, a brilliant appointment. They look like they're doing it properly, to be fair to them. The proof will be in the pudding, but the early signs are good. Um, and Wrexham staying unbeaten, of course, at the moment. I told you Dean Keats would turn it around, and he has. The same with Bolton, as you see at the moment. Any side who changes 15 players in the summer, no matter how good they are, it takes them 8 to 10 games. You've got to give them time. And then they're going on runs like both are now. Uh, Maka, they're adding shouts to the touch version this year. Yeah, that's good. Uh, would this save? It's a good addition, actually. The shouts are, are an important thing, I think. Uh, would this save? Would you be willing to take over the Scotland team at some point? If we get far enough in or they get to a major tournament and there's a job going, then why not? Certainly wouldn't rule it out. It depends how many years in we can get. I'll try and play a little bit off camera in between, particularly between the Tuesday and Sunday, just so we can get the get the sort of years done in six or seven weeks, if you know what I mean. Uh, in six or seven episodes, sorry. So every month we can get a season in. means we can do 10 to 11, realistically, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it's superb for Wrexham, absolutely. All playing for their jobs. I'm a Harrogate fan, having a great season so far, and you were brilliant in that playoff final. We actually predicted it as well, so delighted to see you go up. But uh, my, my mate Tom, who I'm doing the 92 with, he lives in Leeds, so it's round the corner for Harrogate. It's an easy one for us to tick off when they come out of Tier 3. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. But let's go and have a look at the staff and the squad, shall we? It's great to have such an active chat. I'm delighted to have you all in. We're now quite a big coaching and recruitment team, which I'm surprised by. And we'll obviously go and work on that off camera. And just as a reminder, while we've got a, a peak number of viewers in, this series will continue twice every week. So we'll have Tuesday evening at 5.30 and Sunday morning at 10.30. Just so across the week, everyone can stay up to date enough with the series. Because even if you can come in on one regular time slot, you can keep up to date with what's going on. And you won't miss out on too much of the action. So I really do appreciate you coming in. And I'm hoping you'll enjoy this over the next few months. Tom, Harrogate's tier two, isn't it? It is, but Leeds is tier three, which means I can't get to you to start with. That's the problem there. Uh, Rob, thanks for answering my questions. No problem. We've got a lovely little community here. So hopefully we can help as much as possible. Uh, L Gaming, what's the record views on the live streams? So the record concurrent views was on that little evening first look one I did on the day the beta came out, which was just over 30. Um, and the record across the an episode live is about 120 views overall, with about 25 concurrent as the record. And we're only a couple away from that now. Um, so, but in terms of like the, the people who are watching back the streams and giving up the time to watch it is incredible. So the first Wiggins episode is nearly a thousand now as well, which is remarkable. Any chance of getting tickets if you're not a season ticket holder? Yeah, that's probably my question for, for Reggae Boy. How many season ticket holders to Harrogate have now? Because obviously if we can get in with 2,000, that would be a chance for Tom. Did you go to Wrexham Harrogate the other year? Yeah, so Harrogate are up in League 2 now. So it's just getting to Leeds. Once, Tom, if we can find a place outside there to meet, we might be alright. <laughs> Thank you for everyone coming in and all the thumbs up. We're nearly at 20 for that already as well. But let's go and meet the staff. There's a couple I recognise. One of them, who we had at Cliftonville towards the end of last year. Unfortunately, he's not quite as good in this one. So we've met Tony Asgar. We've met Stephen Frail. Let's meet the next most important man, the head of youth development, Andy Goldie. And he's pretty good as well. He's only 35. He's been a youth coach for Scotland, Hamilton and us before. He's not bad at all. He's got a Continental A licence. He's good working with youngsters. Very good, in fact. Good technical coach. Good personality. And good judgment. I mean, he's very good at what he does. Neil Alexander. We know he's got the potential to be a good coach because he was brilliant last year. But he's not quite there yet. So that's something we might have to work on. David Bowman. Okay, it started very well. It's starting to get a bit more average now. But Rangers want him as a coach. Oh, he's a scout, naturally. Maybe that's why they want him. It doesn't look like a great coach. Performance analysis, analysis head. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Stevie Grieve. He's quite good at what he does. We're happy with him. 
Head physio. Pretty good at what he does. No problems there. Uh, head of sports science. Very solid. This is a decent backroom team. If we can add in a couple of good coaches, we've got a decent chief scout as well. An English, so we might get a few up from south of the border. I wonder if he came up with Mickey Mellon. I'm sure someone will know. We've got some scouts on month-to-month -month deals, which seems weird. They're not the greatest. And then one senior scout who's okay. So if we can get in a couple of coaches and a couple of scouts, I think we're all right. Adam Asgar's the reserve manager. I presume he's related to Tony. He's about 30 years younger, so I'm guessing he's the son of. He is. Tony Asgar's the father. Not a bad reserve manager, to be fair. I'm really quite pleased with that. We've got an American as a performance analyst, so that might help as well. Got Indian knowledge. He's only 17. How's that happened? A 17-year-old working in a in a Scottish Premiership football club. On the, non, on the playing side in terms of performance an analysis. That's incredible. Fair play to him. That's a job I'd like to have. So we're in pretty good shape off the pitch. We've got room to bring in those extras. So there's room here for a couple more scouts, a technical director... And room for a couple of coaches as well. And a performance analyst. So I think we're in really good shape. So let me know if you agree. But I'm pretty happy with that. The chat's going mad. I can't even keep up at the moment. It's incredible. I am working on getting towards two screens. It's probably my next investment once the, uh, the ad revenue catches up. So thank you for everyone who watches the adverts and helps along. I do little updates as I go along as to what it helps fund. So it's not a huge amount of money. Obviously I'm a very small channel. But... So far, we've been able to get the desk in. We got face cam as well in the last year since doing it. So those little bits do really add up and help. So thank you for that as well. Uh, all of my city loanies don't want to sign back and now I'm falling apart. We all have that. It's part of the fun. But late in the window, if you wait till sort of the last week of the window, a lot more players get put on a loan list. So it might be a tough first two or three games, but you'll bounce back, I'm sure. Uh, Rego boy, we can have fans back. Nightmare ground to get near and park. Best getting train into the town and walking down. Oh, that's what me and Tom would do anyway. We, we always get public transport. So it works for us. Um, Wrexham aren't allowed fans. No, the Welsh team seem to be out of that, don't they? We've got a pilot event at Luton on Wednesday, which is 1,000. But I won't be in that because it's gone to longer term season ticket holders. And they've had their season tickets longer than I've been alive. So <laughs> I can't complain. Um, but I'm hoping Saturday with 2,000. Maybe then, but... Luton's first terrible away performance since Nathan Jones returned yesterday. Got battered by Cardiff. Uh, holds three and a half thousand, but talking around, taking around 800 season ticket holders. That's not bad. Because, I mean, the season ticket holders before, I know there was a big controversy at the start of the promotion season about them putting the prices up. We talked about it before because they went up to about 260, didn't they, for the season tickets. But, yeah, Harrogate's a club I'd like to go and watch. Uh, Craig, I think it will be hard for non-season ticket holders at all EFL and Premier League clubs this season. Couldn't agree more. There's maybe a handful of League 2 clubs, but other than that, even a lot of National League clubs, you're probably talking about the North and South being the main place you could probably first go and watch football. Uh, how's Jake Lawler doing? Oh, he's there now, isn't he? Yeah. Try and get Ali McCoyst as assistant. I won't do, but I will go and have a look at him. Unless he comes up naturally, because our assistant's very good. But let's see where he is. Oh, he's a manager in game. He's rated really poorly, actually. Seems a shame, that. He did a decent job at Rangers. I know it didn't end great, but... He's my favourite pundit to watch on the telly. He does the Scottish football show. It's brilliant. Uh, free goal. Welcome along. Thank you for popping in. Just started a save with Aberdeen. Too much to do. I will spare you the details and do most of it off camera here. We'll just do an introduction to the side in a bit. You're fuming, Wrexham. Let Jake Lawler go. I'm Matt Sargent. You've got a good squad, though. Sometimes you've got to balance things out. Craig, I'm not even answering that one. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. Work experience, 17-year-old. Imagine that and then getting yourself in football manager. It's not bad, is it? Brian Grant in your backroom team. Sterling legend from the 80s. Let's go and have a look. Where is he? Loan manager. He's all right. I mean, I've never used a loan manager in football manager before because... I only get to the elite level for two years, and it's only normally in the head coach. So, there you go. Tom, yeah. Well done. Tom got his own back there. Craig relying on Arsenal legends to help him out. 
Uh, Burnley keeper was shocking. Oh, Peacock Farrell. He was a good young keeper. He had his confidence not because he kept getting replaced at Leeds at the time, didn't he? Um, but he's a good goalkeeper. He just had a tough day. He'll get, him, he'll get his way back eventually. Uh, we sold Grant to Aberdeen with a 25k clause if he made an international cap. Was on the bench for Scotland once but never came on. That's got to be so frustrating with those sorts of deals. It's when you miss that the international manager was a good mate, didn't you? I had them, but not now. City won't even let them go. Yeah, I have, I've had the same with a few of them, to be honest. The youngsters are hard to get back for a second loan spell this year, which is right, I guess. Uh, I loved Harrogate last year when I went. I'm hoping... If not this season, very much at the start of next season we can go. Craig, we'll get him back again in the next network save. Fair enough. That's bad. That centre-back is injured. Oh, well. At least you got the money for him before that. If you're getting Spanish followers at Wrexham, you'll get, you'll get a few Americans across as well. Let me know. Let me know when they come along. Arsenal haven't had a legend since Adams. You've got to be joking, right? Thierry Henry was since Adams. Patrick Vieira since Adams. You're just you're just causing you're you're deliberately trying to wind people up now, Craig. Don't wind Tom up on a Sunday morning. We're all relaxed. We should all go to a Dundee United game when they can. Never been to a game in Scotland, so I'd quite like to do so. We had talked before about getting the train up because one of our mates down here is a is a Ranger season ticket holder, and he goes up on the train. So we were going to try and get one to a sort of lower in the table team but as we started talking about it this all happened obviously so what we're going to do now of course we'll go for a, about an hour or so this morning is we want to go through this squad now i've put them in star ability order but we'll go in position order instead and you can see firstly we've got three stars in the team lauren shankland giando fuchs and benji siergrist i believe that is in goal now he used to be at villa didn't he I think he was. Let me get the career stats up here somewhere. Because they've disappeared now. If I do Solihull. Yeah, Aston Villa he came through at. Started at Basel. But he's played in a few different places. He's a very good goalkeeper. At four star ability. Four star potential. He's really solid. He helped them to promotion. He's got really good goalkeeping attributes. He's solid physically. Mentally he's average. But if we can get good players around him. That's not an issue. He's got a two-year contract, so we know he's here for at least the full season before we might have to sell. So anyone who won't sign a deal, if we can at least keep them until one year to go, then we'll be all right. Is Marvellous Marvin Andrews still playing in Scotland? I mean, he goes on forever, doesn't he? I was trying to get an interview with him on the podcast, but unfortunately he wouldn't do. No, he's a te oh, no, it's not him. Mar oh, Marvin Andrews. I'm sure I put in Marvin, didn't I? Let's have a look. Yeah, there's no Marvin Andrews here, so I'm guessing not. I've got all of the British leagues loaded, so I'm guessing he would be there if he was involved still. I think he was playing somewhere weird last time I looked, or somewhere obscure. Poor Tom getting wine up on a Sunday because his team he supports isn't the best at the moment. Well, I was going to say, United and Arsenal's last lot of legends can't have been too far apart. Maybe United's a few years later, but I mean, United's last legend is probably still the... The Rooney Ronaldo era, isn't it? And let's talk defensive as well. People like Valencia and that were very good. Uh, and 50 the last time they did. Yeah, no Marvin Andrews, I'm afraid. But a very good goalkeeper to start. That's an area where with a decent enough backup in Dennis Mehmet, we're not going to have to worry about that this season. So in terms of the transfers, before we do that, the budget... And I'll talk about the rules we have in a minute for that. But the budget is a hundred grand with two grand on the wage budget, which realistically, if we don't sell, is possibly one signing or two loan players, maybe a couple of free agents, whichever way you want to look at it. So if we can only improve two areas of the squad with a goalkeeping team like that, that isn't a priority. At right back, we've got Giando Fuchs, who's actually a holding or centre midfielder. Four-star ability, four-and-a-half potential. He's Cameroonian, so we've got to worry about that when the African Nations Cup goes back to the winter. That's going to be a concern. He's on three grand a week, so bigger money. He has signed in the summer from Maccabi Haifa. Or was it Alaves where he was out on loan? I don't know. But a very good player. A solid player at this level. It shows that we're not quite at the Rangers Celtic level. But I'd argue those... Star players can compete with the likes of Aberdeen for third place. 
It's just whether we've got enough of them across the squad and then can add two or three more. So he's a centre midfielder, but Liam Smith is also a right back. Now, he's only got a one-year contract, so let's firstly check if he's happy to discuss one. He is. So we can start to look at him for future plans. He's pretty good. He's 24, he's Scottish, he's a former under-21 international, came from at Hearts, and he's good going forward as well. So if we're going to play a central formation, are we going to play wide play 4-4-2 or 4-2-4? We want fullbacks who can get forward, and Liam Smith looks like the man. So he's very good. For a first season, we'll be happy to have him in the squad. The chat's going mad again. Get Paul Cook as your assistant. He'll never come as assistant. Saido Berahino. Where did he go? I can't remember where he went. Didn't he have a trial in a championship club or something recently? I don't think he'll be in here with just the British leagues loaded. He was playing somewhere obscure. I'm going to have to go and look now. Sorry, you've sidetracked me here. Excuse the, the keyboard. Saido Berahino is... Belgian club Chaleroy, and he's on loan from uh, Zolti, another Belgian club, and he cap he's captain for Burundi, obviously. But yeah, he's playing over in Belgium now, so maybe in the head coach will bump into him. Paul Cook's brilliant. Oh, Ian, good morning, welcome along. Thanks for popping in. Ian Holloway's assistant. We're never getting him out of Grimsby, are we? Roy Keane's assistant. I don't want to scare them off or scare myself in the first few minutes. Uh, Arteta will be a confirmed legend soon. Are you sure about that, Tom? Because every other week he's a legend and in the other weeks they want him sacked. So I'm not sure how it's going with him. Tom, steady on. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure about Arteta. I think you need to win your own fan base round before you can talk about him being a legend. Ragabon, Norway, not far off. Not far off at all. Ash Wilson, welcome along. Sign Anthony Spyro from non-league is a bargain. We had him at um, Macclesfield in FM20. He was our superstar. He kept us up. I won't be able to sign any of these guys. And I'll tell you why when we go through the rules. But if we have a look at him. He's contracted to Holland. They're a non-league side, aren't they? Yeah, Eastern Counties League. Very good player, though. Not good enough for this level. But definitely, if you're a League 2 or a non-league manager, go for him. Right, let's carry on with the squad then. We've gone through goalkeeper. We found a right back and a centre mid who's very good. We've got Mark Reynolds, who's 33 now, but physically he's still solid enough. He's a very good centre-half. Played for years for Aberdeen and Motherwell and was part of very good sides there. I remember a series I had in like FM10 maybe, and I won the league with Motherwell after two seasons, and this guy was brilliant. It might have even been 09, because I think that was the year where you could score loads of goals from corners. But we'll see. But he's a very good centre-half. A ball player as well. Good on the ball. We can play out from the back. Not bad at all. A very good personality. Definitely a captain. And if he's not already, he might be by the start of the season. The other centre-half's not quite so good. Two and a half star for Mark Connolly. He's a bit slower. I'm not a big fan of that. Is that the... It's not. It's the Wolves and Bolton Mark Connolly. I thought it might have been the Arsenal one, but that's Matthew Connolly, I think, isn't it? But another decent player. Solid as a backup. Ryan Edwards is the other, 26 years of age. Comes from Blackpool, played for Plymouth and Morecambe in the past, and Rochdale. He's alright, but again, he's very slow. I don't like slow centre-halves. I don't know if it's just me being a, a bit rude, but I don't like them. So, if we've got one priority position, centre-half is one already. Uh, Anthony Spiro, former Wrexham, there you go. Uh, Shakira, welcome along. Enjoying the content, great channel. Appreciate your support. Thank you for coming in. Jones rejects them, yes, the centre-back, the legend. See, so there you go, that's Major Day. Never get too downhearted in FM. There's always something good around the corner. Cup winner as captain and manager. Yeah, but you still want him out two months later after fans, so... It's, you've got to be patient with Arsenal. It's a two-year rebuilding job. It's the same as United. If you're giving it to Solskjaer, then let him have three or four years and then judge him. Uh, Nevsky, he was in Belgium. Yep, yeah, absolutely spot on. Get Graham Jones steady on. He's at Bournemouth anyway. Uh, see if Chelsea will own you Billy Gilmore. Again, a good player. We had him in the Wigan series, the beta save. But we can't take suggestions for the transfers. Uh, Ryan Gould, he was over in Portugal, wasn't he? Because he was a wonder kid a few years back. He is still in Portugal, I think. Yeah, Portuguese Premier League. He's a very good player. Um, and he's only got one year left on his deal. So who knows if he'll pop up later down the line. Uh, you sound like a FIFA player now. Mengi time. Well, interesting you should say that, Josh. 
I won't sh show it just yet, but he is one of the players who has uh, popped up in my scout reports already. So he might be my centre-half solution because he has popped up naturally. We'll talk about the rules afterwards. Deshaun Bernard is never being managed by me in this game, Craig. If he turn up at any club, he's there. Even if he's the best player, he's getting sold. Dennis, see, you all know all the free agents, but I can't sign your suggestions, and I'll tell you why in a minute. We try to make this game as realistic as possible, and that's part of it. For anyone who hasn't followed before, the same rules will apply to my one club stories, which I'll tell you through in a minute. But let's go back to the squad. We've seen we probably need a centre-half. We've got a left-back in Jamie Robson, who's three-star ability, four-star potential. He's a 22-year-old Scott. He's played 93 games for the club. I don't know if it's too much pressure for him to start in the SPL, because he won't do great. But he's the best that we've got at the minute. So if we can get a left-back, great. If not, he's not a disaster. We'll cope with it. Into midfield, we've got Luke Bolton, a right midfielder, a man I know well from Luton last year. Can also cover at right back, which helps us massively. And he's natural as a right on a four of midfield and as a winger. So that means we can play the 4-2-4 if we want. Luke Bolton, a very good pro. We like him. Callum Butcher, centre midfielder, holding midfielder and can cover centre half. Three-star ability, 29-year-old Englishman. Been here a couple of years after time at Mansfield. Weird move to Billericay with the money. Millwall, Burton, and he's played for us before. Good player. I like him. Definitely a squad player. Might even be a starter. Peter Paulett, he was at Aberdeen for years, wasn't he? Played for MK Dons and now he's back up here. Solid backup. Good backup centre midfielder for us. Dylan Powers, three-star ability, three-star potential. Again, not the quickest. American, under-20 international in the past. Comes from Colorado and Orlando City. I'm not a big fan of his attribute layout, but he's all right. He's a solid squad player. I think of the three, it would be Butcher starting alongside Fuchs and then Paulit and Powers as the subs. And then we've got Ian Harks as well, another two and a half star. I don't think he's quite as good. He's been a backup for them in real life. Another American from DC United. He's one where if we need to, to sell to bolster the squad, he's probably one of the ones I'd let go, in truth. I mean, Dylan Powers might fall into that category too, to be honest. Uh, okay, I mean, now my squad's thin and not as good. I bet it's not as thin as the breaking at the start of the season too in the head coach. Uh, free gold, just found your channel and you've quickly become one of my favourites. Great that you're managing in Scotland. Well, you have to thank my fellow subscribe, your fellow subscribers, sorry, who have voted for it. Because it could have been Luton, Stevenage or Valamina. But they voted for Dundee United. The head coach, it was the first job that came up. So it's coincidence, but I've got a lot of Scottish followers now. So Scottish people are lovely. You're all been good to me, so I appreciate you. We're only one thumbs up away from uh, 20 now, which is incredible. Probably the highest I've ever had live during a stream. So thank you for your support with it. There will be a Wrexham save here one day. Might be sooner than you think. Who knows? Uh, L Gaming, what scouting package have you got? Good question. Let's have a look. Uh, scouting package. See, I don't know if you can look without going into the player search. Oh, no, I can go to scouted players instead. We won't have too much of a look at them today, but there's a lot of players you recognise there. Uh, so it's the Scotland recruitment package that's there. We can't afford to up it to UK and Ireland, so it'll probably be more Scottish-based players. We've got a sell-on clause as well. This kid, Scott Banks, he's been sold to Palace last summer, I think, or in January. He's a brilliant player. He's 18 years of age, a Scottish left winger. I'd love to get him back. He's a player Dundee United are aware of, so we'll keep an eye on him throughout this save. He's someone we'll definitely look at. Our Gervin on FM. I would imagine they probably are, Tom. Let's see. Yeah. There you go. They've got a couple of real players as well, Tom. Or one, Kieran Balfour, formerly of Rangers Youth Team and Air. But yeah, they're in game. And there's a there's a creator, I think he's called Mozza. He's made a database for the Scottish Lowland and Highland League. So you could actually manage them. And it goes down loads of tiers to take them to the top. There's one who's always done it in England, so it would be good. Uh, Josh, the shame that Dundee United youngster Scott Banks went to Palace. There you go. We just mentioned him. It's such a shame. Um, well, we will try and get him back one day. L Gaming, was that a teaser for a Wrexham save? 
Not necessarily, but we'll... We might be there sooner than you think. You never know. There's plenty to come on the channel, so we'll see. Tom's, Tom's supporting Gervin now. When's the food channel coming? I mean, this went nuts, so I just had to delay it. There's about three videos pre-recorded, but... With being back to work and that, I don't want to rush it. I'd rather it be good than have a few out and then leave a big gap. So, there will be a, a general slash food channel eventually. Got to, got to combine the two hobbies. Uh, is Chris Mockery from the youth squad good? Let me have a look at him. There weren't really any players in the youth team above two stars. Because I promoted all the rest. But in terms of potential, yeah, he's up there. So, he's on loan at Montrose. Two star ability, four and a half potential. So yeah, he's got the potential to be there. I was just seeing if any of these players were ones that we'd had on loan before at Breakin in the head coach. Oh, Jacob Comerford's a name I recognised. I think we've come up against him. And Michael MacArthur. We've currently got him on loan in the head coach. So there are a couple of mini little crossovers there. But let's go back to the first team squad. We've got a three-star left winger in Adrian Sporrell. He's an Argentinian. Three-star ability, four-star potential. Wanted by Kilmarnock. He's not bad. He can play left back. He can play left wing. I quite like him. He's going to be a good squad player first year, I think. Has he just joined the club? No, he was there the second half of last year. Came through at Banfield in his native land. Nicky Clark is listed as a left winger, but he's a number 10 or striker. Three star ability, three potential. Did have that spell at Rangers in the lower leagues. Played for Berry briefly, Dunfermline and now Dundee United. I could see him being my sort of super sub striker. He's sort of similar to Shanklin, but about two or three attribute points worse for everything. But a solid player nonetheless. And we'll see if we get a big offer, of course. Paul McMullen is a right winger. Two and a half ability, three and a half potential. I'm going to be honest with you here and say that I don't really rate him. Oh, he might be better as a poacher, though. Apparently not. Mm, if we have to keep him as a backup, then fair enough. But that's not my sort of player. I like players who are technically good, who are mentally strong, and he's not. He's basically there because he's electric quick. And then Logan Chalmers looks like the best youngster at the club. Three-star ability, five-star potential. 20 years of age, right winger. Oh, he's an inside forward. He can play off the left, though, as well. He looks a good player. So we could be using an inverted winger yet. We do generally like to have one winger and one cutting in. So that could work for us. But I'd probably rather have him on the left than Bolton on the right. Tries tricks. He's a flair player. If he doesn't get into the first 11 this year, he's definitely going to be a star in the future. That's for sure. Uh, Moz is a good lad. Used to work beside him. Know him well. Yeah, he seems to be a, a good laugh, doesn't he? Uh, all these other Wrexham fan pages coming out. Knew this would happen. There'll be loads of fake fans, which could ruin fans' real chance of getting tickets. So in terms of at the moment, it won't. And don't forget, the race course is a big ground. So actually, it'll just see it full again, which will be nice. But it's part of the thing of getting bigger, isn't it? Girvan should be my Scottish team, but they're too far down. Air would be the nearest league club for my family. To be fair, I would say go lower. Why not? Support the lowest one you can. Let's have a look at the strikers because this is the reason we've chosen this save. There's Mark McNulty who's on loan from Reading. He was at Sunderland last year. He's played for Hibs. He's played for Reading. He's played for Coventry where he had probably his best spell of his career. As well as loads of other big EFL clubs. Sheffield United, uh, Portsmouth, Livingston in Scotland. He's a poacher. He's an advanced forward. He's a good player. So alongside Lauren Shankland we have to have a front two because those two are stunning. Lauren Shankland is the star man though, a Scottish international, four star ability, four and a half potential, two year deal on three grand a week. Will he sign a new one? He might. So if we can get the minimum fee release clause out, he might be a superstar. Not got one in at the moment, so we won't add one. 17 finishing, 16 composure, great personality, good in the air. Not the quickest, but certainly no slouch. I just really like him, he's like the perfect poacher. So we'll have him and McNulty. We'll sort of trial and error in pre-season. One as the poacher, one as the advance. And see which way round it works the best. But brilliant two strikers. And then Lewis Apere. Two and a half star ability. Three and a half potential. Another one out of the youth academy. Not great. But as a fourth choice striker this year, he'd certainly do the job, I think. So looking at the window, I think centre half and left back are the two we have to get. 
And then if we can add another quality central midfielder, we'll be delighted. But there's certainly not much to worry about there. Uh, Macro, I once got a meal from the anchor in Gerve and I left without paying for it. Not deliberately. <laughs> got that bit in very quick. Uh, Owen, sorry, I didn't see the first one. So I can't, I will ignore it, but I will assume you were, you were not disastrous. I'm trying to think which one the anchor in is. There's only a few pubs in Gervin, so I've probably been. Uh, Christopher, welcome along. Did you watch any Irish League games recently? I watched the majority of Warren Point Linfield yesterday, which was something else. So I had that on the laptop and I had Peter Bracciolli on the TV. And both games were as remarkable as each other. Macca McNulty inexplicably got a Scotland cap. He's, he's not an awful striker, but I can understand he's not a Scottish international. Was it around the time where he was banging them in, though, in the Football League? Because if it was, you can understand it. Yeah, the Chorley performance, it wasn't just that it was an upset. They dominated the match as well. Bar the first 20 minutes and the last five, they were sensational. Right on the waterfront, if my memory serves me right. Cryogenica, welcome along. Thank you for coming in. Most important question, is there a Northern Ireland League download? Let's go further down, do you mean? Because the top three tiers are in there. So the Dansky Bank, the Championship and the third tier, the Intermediate League are in there. Um, so I don't know if anyone's made a database to go lower, but there's all the top three tiers are all in-game. Um, we, we use that in the Cliftonville save quite a lot, obviously, because a lot of our youngsters were going out on loan to the third tier. Uh, Jota has been superb for Liverpool. Yeah, great start. Really great start. He was good for... Wolves, to be fair. VAR ruining the game. It won't be there in its current form next season. I'll make that prediction now. Yeah, the Welbeck one. It's just those offsides where they can't even guarantee it with the frame rate. It's very strange. Nice squad. Try your forwards on twin rolls. Works well in 4-4-2. Yeah, I'm going to give it a go, I think. We'll, we'll just do a few trial and errors in pre-season off camera. It was a pen. For me, it was a pen. It was a clear and obvious error. But there have been so many... Where they've been sent over to the screen where they're not clear and obvious errors. And I think it's the fact that there's the inevitability that no ref will go to the screen and say, no, it's all right, actually, I'm going to stick with my decision. Did Welbeck even really appeal? No. Good movement, though. I've always said Welbeck's one of the best strikers off the ball in the world. He might not have all the ability on it, but his movement's sensational. And he outfoxed Andy Robertson. Yeah, it, it it was, I presume you're saying meant to there, rather than Emma Tot. <laughs> but yeah, it's it can improve the game, but the way it's been implemented is awful. And no matter what artificial intelligence or whatever you put into the game, if it's controlled by humans, it's always going to have errors in. And we know that in the football, the governing bodies want to make things as complicated as possible. Maka, no, it's when he was at Hibs. Oh, that's bizarre. <laughs> Instead of risking about the food talk, we're talking about these things. How is it a pen? Shocking. So I thought it was a Stonewall pen, to be honest. I really thought it was a penalty. Yeah, I agree. Welbeck shouldn't have left United. He was a good squad player there. Did you see the Chorley Flash singing Adele after the game? Yeah, I did. It was quite funny. Yeah, you got to turn autocorrect off. It does your head in, the same as me. So there's the squad we've got at Dundee United. That's the main introduction today, of course. What I am pleased about is that we've got some stars in the team. We've got some really good mix of youth and experience as well. Lots of youngsters coming through with big potential in the reserve teams. We're talking three, four and a half star, uh, four and four and a half star potential, and some of them are only 16 years of age. They've got a way to go, but there's promising signs. I don't think any of them are quite ready yet. There's a 20-year-old with two and a half star there, but he's not got the biggest potential, unfortunately. But otherwise, it's all right. So what we've got to talk about before we go off camera and get into the window this summer is the rules for signings. Uh, it would have been a solid, good solid pro for us. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, a, a lot of clubs make that mistake. They think they can get better superstars, but actually having players that are there, that grew up with the club, that know the club, that care about the club in your squad, particularly off the bench, is really useful. Well, that's the thing. I guess, I guess the thing is, El Gaming, there's, there's lots of people who have said it is and isn't a penalty, which shows it probably shouldn't have been overturned for a clear and obvious error. And that's the point with the VAR. For the subjective things, that was supposed to be the threshold. So why was he sent to the screen? And it's happened a lot of times. 
Uh, teams like Brighton just need that clinical player. It's always been the difference, though, hasn't it? I mean, Connolly could get there in time. We had him at Luton on loan. He looked a prospect, but he just hasn't got that finishing that finishing attribute yet. But once he gets there, he'd be superb. More pace penalty was appalling. Craig, blame Van Gaal. Yeah, I agree. Tom, you like Welbeck too. I scored that cup goal. I remember that. It was a Monday night game, wasn't it? I'm sure he played like, it was on like the Easter Monday or something weird. Uh, Leeds United have played some of the best football I've seen this season in the last couple of games. It just shows the fickleness of the Premier League, doesn't it? I think, was it after Leeds beat Villa? And there was a poll saying, who's had the best start to the season or whatever? No, it was after the uh, Villa beat Liverpool. And it was, who's had the best start to the season? And Villa won. And then Leeds beat Villa and it's, oh, Leeds are much better. And then suddenly Bielsa's got to be out two games later because they got beat 4-1 both times. And now suddenly he's the best thing since sliced bread again. What? When did it come about that football fans decide on managers after two games? It's, two games isn't a crisis. We've got to learn that. But there you go. Uh, it's Craig United fan. Yeah, Luton and United for him. Uh, but thank you for all your support as well. We're still in the 20s for both views and likes. It is much appreciated. But I want to talk to you very quickly before we go this morning about the rules. 9,000 Arsenal fans were there on a Monday night. Yeah, I remember that. Because the FA Cup, you get 15% away attendance, don't you? I want to talk about the rules for transfers. Because I've said to quite a lot of you, particularly some of the newer ones along, that I can't take suggestions in the window. So a bit like all of our One Club series and our Build a Nation. So Bangor City at the moment, Cliftonville and Dorking last year, Torquay the year before. We can only sign players that are found organically. So that's players either that we're already very aware of. So like for me, I can go to my beloved Luton Town and say, have you got anyone you can give us? Because I know them very well. We can sort out the affiliates and bits like that. We can also... On the other side of things, use the scout reports, the director of football suggestions, which is why it's so crucial we've got one at the start here. We can pick up the paper rumours in the transfer section, and we can also pick any player we play against and scout them and sign them, of course. But we can't just go to the player search screen or the staff search screen. We don't use that. We've had adverts out for the, for the staff's uh, backroom team, and we take backroom team suggestions for, for new staff to come in. So we don't use the player or self search screen in-game. So that's the reason we can't do some of those things. Uh, how is that a brilliant goal rightfully ruled out and I have him in my fantasy team? One of those things, isn't it? Plenty of them this season. Di Maria got sent off his biggest contribution in the United shirt. Uh, Wigan fans gave Owen a couple of months a couple of months and was pretty much forced to leave. Yeah. It's it is a bit of a shame, isn't it? Tourist league fans, yes. The problem is it's creeping into lower league football. Like the amount I saw with Bolton after five games to Ian Everett. And, I mean, we did the pre-season podcast predictions. And I said, they're going to be crap for eight to ten games. I use it every single time, and I've probably said it in half of my streams. When we came up with John Still in the National League, the start of Luton's revival, we had 14 points after ten games, and we were 13th or 14th in the league. We finished the season with 100 points, 100 goals and champions. And they nearly got in the playoffs in League 2 the year after. You've got to give teams time. I just, I really don't understand it. But there we go. So yeah, no player and staff search screen here. So in terms of the staffing, we're just going to go and put out a couple of adverts now. So I've gone to the staff search by mistake there, which isn't what we wanted. So the job centre, we're going to look for a scout and we're going to look for a coach just to add to the team. And if we can get two good ones in, I think we're in pretty good shape, to be honest. I'm just seeing which other manager jobs are up. Wigan, Derby. I'm surprised the Derby one's up in game. I'd have thought they'd have just given it Rooney. Oh, look, Mike Jackson's favourite for Chesterfield. Craig will be interested in that. The man who's just been sacked from Tranmere, of course. Probably would want to go back to being assistant, I'd imagine, after his one spell in management. But there you go. If we go to the responsibilities... We're going to set loads of these off camera as well. And we're going to try and make sure that we get the scouting things right. With the recruitment meeting this year, it's a bit easier. It's one of my favourite new features. But it's just sort of understanding how we work off the pitch. So in terms of tactic, we're definitely going for wing play this year. We're going to go 4-2-4, I think. And in terms of the midfield, I think we're going to go deep line playmaker on support. And for now... We'll say box to box or ball winner because that suits Giandro Fuchs, who is our joint best player. So it makes sense. 
In terms of wing backs, we'll probably have them defend just to be a little bit more. We're a mid table side, we can't go over the top. And then we'll have wingers on support for now. But on that right hand side, are we going to have the inside forward? We'll just wait and see. Advance forward and poacher up front. But I mean, otherwise, after the introduction to Dundee United, the squad, the staff that we've got. I'm actually quite optimistic for the season. So let me know what you think will happen, how we'll get on. If you've missed any of this stream, of course, there'll be a replay afterwards. So thank you for coming along. We've broken record numbers for the amount of views overall in this. And the watch time's very good as well. So I can't thank you enough for supporting this Sunday morning. This series will continue on Tuesday at 5.30pm. And then next Sunday at 10.30am as well. So every week, Tuesday afternoon. Reason being, it's my day off work. And Sunday morning, where hopefully... Most of us are off work and able to relax before the Sunday football. Valencia forgot we sold well, so passed him the ball. <laughs> Would you rather be a player under Klopp or Pep and why? I don't know. I would say probably Klopp as well because it's my type of character. Uh, man management is more, or people management is my style of thing. It's the way I work as a manager in a workplace, so I would say that definitely. It has gone fast. Over an hour up already. As we said, this one will probably be one of the shortest of the series. One, so it helps people who come in and watch it on replay afterwards. And secondly, because the introduction is the most important bit. And throughout today, while the FA Cup football's on, my job is to get through the transfer window, get the scouts working, and get in a couple of fantastic players. So hopefully, you'll be joining me for the first game of the season, which is St Johnston at home on the 1st of August. The League Cup is later in the year, and bar Ross County, it's all lower league sides. So we should be doing well in that one. But we'll be back on the 1st of August. St Johnston away from home, just under five weeks' time. Or St Johnston at home, sorry, in just under five weeks' time. Five substitutes, remember. We got full by breaking for a year. We've got five substitutes this season. So the bigger squad, the better. And we're going to try and get in a couple of loanies, a couple of free agents, whatever it may be. Just to bolster centre-half, left-back, and possibly centre-mid. So hopefully we've got all of that when we're back on Tuesday. Thank you very much for watching, making the chat so active and all your thumbs up on the video. And I'll see you on Tuesday night at 5.30 for this one. We'll be live again for that. And of course, in the meantime, the head coach at half three today. I hope you'll be there to see it. The final episode of Balamina Mobile at half five two, a triple header on the channel today. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on Tuesday as we're back for our first game with Dundee United. Thanks for watching.